Hey guys, so we made it to Northeastern Ontario. We're currently at North Bay for our first stop. I'm here doing the Lake Temiskaming tour. The Lake Temiskaming tour is a cross-province tourism initiative between Ontario and Quebec and it features attractions, sites, culinary stops, restaurants, all along the Lake Temiskaming Shores area. It's a great way to experience the region's Anglophone, Francophone, and Algonquin cultures. Hey everyone, this is Raymond from Traveling Foodie and, and today I'm going on my first road trip in 2021 and I'm here with Patrick from Feed My Food. Hey, hi guys. And we're headed to northeastern Ontario. Right now we're on the road and it's three and a half hours to our first stop in North Bay and we're doing the Lake Temiskaming Shores tour. So we made it on our first stop which is White Owl Bistro in North Bay and they're a locally owned restaurant. It's a Feast On certified restaurant locally sourced, everything is within Ontario uh, produce and products, so let's check it out. So Patrick, what are you getting? Uh, well, this is a Fison certified restaurant. So um, I was talking with the server, they suggested us to order some local uh, menu items. So I'm looking at the oven roasted beef croissant here. That uh, sounds pretty interesting that to me. So, good. so this is the grass-fed beef and bison burger, and it's pretty massive. And the uh, bison is actually from Bison du Nord, which we're visiting later this trip. Rock to do some harvesting and hiking. Hey guys, so we're here at Devil's Rock and we're doing a hike and harvesting tour with Jonathan from Fire Forêt. Hi. So uh, I have a small gift for you. It's a little basket of uh, wild uh, product. So I have cedar jelly that is good with uh, uh, cheese on a bread or uh, like a piece of meat. I have cattail hearts that uh, are good in salads and uh, fur syrup. Fur syrup are very good with uh, blueberry pancakes and uh, other desserts. So uh, that's for you guys. It's the first time for me at Devil's Rock but I do partnership with other people uh, in Ontario and I do trips uh, everywhere on the territory. territory. Okay. know a, a little bit about the uh, wild mushroom and other edibles uh, in the forest? All I know is like eating them. <laughs> I don't know how to identify <laughs> them eat, from eat the forest. So the, the cedar jelly you have in, in your basket, or uh, this is cedar. So you have small uh, uh, cedar uh, branch tips that we uh, infuse with water and we do a jelly with it. And oh. And fur, fur is, this is fur. So uh, with fur, with the small, uh, okay. same thing, we do uh, a syrup with the branch and uh, it's uh, sweet and you, you use it with your desserts. Also, you actually use the branch, not just the leaves. Yeah, I, I, do, I, no, I don't use the, the sip. I use the branch and take the flavor from mm. infusing the branch. Okay. And you have a tremelot right there. These are cantarelles. These are very nice mushroom. Easy to uh, identify. Yellow, bright yellow. Mm. The hike is around 20 minutes, but the ground is very wet and slippery. Yes, it was raining yesterday. 
so it takes longer for us as I'm afraid of slipping and the camera on like that. What you can harvest in Ontario is similar to Quebec or there's big difference? It's very quite similar. Uh, it's the difference is more uh, more you go south you we will have different species but uh, from around uh, there it's, it's very uh, similar there from Quebec or Ontario okay. side but if you go uh, south like Montreal Toronto uh -huh. region Ottawa this there is a uh, different species there okay and is there a limit like like do they allow you to just take whatever yeah, there are no uh, no regulation okay. uh, for mushroom picking. Okay. okay, so you don't you don't need a license like fishing. Yeah, like fish, yeah, that's what I was license. thinking of. You need a license to commercialize them. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but you don't you, you don't have a limit. Okay. To harvest uh, mushroom. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. There are some limit in France, like for uh, sep uh, and stuff like that, but not uh, not in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're reaching the end. I can see the the shore is seen. Hey guys, so we've made it to the edge of Devil's Rock and this is the view. The cliff there, uh, it's called Devil's Rock and uh, the Algonquin when they made the canoe trip, uh, they, they stop here and uh, do uh, offering uh, to uh, protect them. So Devil's Rock is a, a very, very nice place and we have a, a nice view of the Timiskam, like Timiskaming. So this is Devil's Rock, like what we're standing on? Yeah. Okay. So there's two trails that you can do. One is the yellow one, which is the easier trail, and the red one. We did the yellow one and it's supposed to be 20 minutes pick a leaf and it's uh, it's, it's it tastes like a uh, peppermint like oh, pink okay. pink peppermint oh. so if you want to take one of these and just chew on it you will uh, you will taste it the winter green okay. so we're Not trying the winter green winter green tea, tea. Oh, yeah, you do taste like peppermint. Hmm. But there's a bitter aftertaste. I guess that's when you spit it out. <laughs> yeah, but this one is a very nice uh, looking, uh, oh, wow. very nice color, yeah. Russula, and you have a slug that uh, really, really li likes it too. This one oh. is called Artomyces pixidatus. It's crown tipped coral mushroom. So crown tip mushroom, every small tip are like a small crown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You have a, another mushroom that you always find, uh, you often find this one uh, on trails. It's called Coltricia perinis. It's a little polypore that uh, uh, loves uh, sandy soil. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very nice and sometimes they are quite uh, big. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, if someone want to to know what a crid is, just take a small bite and taste. Or yeah, just of... just chew a, a small bite, like and uh, we're trying the Ursula Ursula <laughs> and spit them. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I see that. You, <laughs> you <feel this. laughs> This one is a baby ballet. It's Emilexinum subglabripes. It's a it's an edible ballet. And when they're young like this, they're not uh, man, so much uh, infested. So oh. this one is very nice. But you have like one bite there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a ballet. You have pores. They are very small because it's uh, only a button. But it's a, it's a really nice uh, little mushroom and mm -hmm. a good edible. Okay. Yeah. There 
you have a mushroom that grow on wood and uh, you have three gills and they are getting pinkish it's a old old uh, old mushroom that uh, grows in uh, in association with wood it's uh, it's an old one mega colibia rodmani so after hiking, our reward is a food crawl into Miskaming Shores, starting with Lotokton. They feature a contemporary take on North American classics, as seen through an indigenous lens. It'll be my first time trying indigenous food, so I'm excited. So here is the Hilly Berry Hill, and the whiskey sour. So this is their most popular dish, it's called the burger, and it's massive. We choose ring fries. Come, see, see, see. We ordered a bunch of appetizers to share, so it's all the food industry. And we have the shrimp taco called vampiro shrimp. And here is the fry bread. We ordered all their popular dishes, and they're also known for their deviled egg. So our next stop is this of course, and it's Whiskey Jack to your company where we're bringing beer flights up with food pairing. Mark. Oh, hello. Patrick. Patrick, um, nice yeah, to meet I'm you. Mark. I'm Raymond. Raymond, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So we, um, we paired up uh, with a few local uh, food producers to pair our beers to different foods uh, that are uh, produced locally. Uh, we're looking at to uh, partnering with uh, Chocolat Martin to pair our Chocolate Chaos, obviously. We have a pale ale that we want to pair with the homemade, house-made kettle chips if you want. So uh, different salts, different uh, flavors that we can uh, uh, and take and, and mix with our, our locally produced uh, potatoes from Saint Bruno de Gig, uh, right across the lake. So here's our amber ale. So that's the, uh, the third can that you see there. That one we want to pair with uh, like a house-made uh, cookie or biscuit that we can do in-house. Half yeah. cup beer because sort of like in a, Earlton, half is cup is pretty popular so they tied up with them to create this half cup beer. Hey guys, so we're having dinner at Dante's tonight and they feature a lot of local products and producers as well like Tornado cheese that we're visiting tomorrow as well and they have a nice patio with a tiki bar um, they're also open for indoor dining as well and say hi Patrick. Okay. <laughs> so we've been eating quite a bit and gonna have food coma in time for for sleeping tonight. So we're doing the Zante's Cup takeover tonight for dinner and Zante's Cup takeover is actually what they offer for the Lake Temiskaming tours but the takeover changes almost daily when they have the event and you need to pre-book it so that they know the quantity and the price changes. So it's really something special you can do that's unique. Basically tie up with the local producers and local beers. So our first course is the fresh summer salad with local heirloom tomato and basil and it's paired with the mutants are revolting by flying monkeys brewery. So it's also topped with cheese fruit, the ale, cheese from fromage house, which we'll also be visiting tomorrow. So it's amazing to see how the Miskaming Shores area actually uses a lot of local products around the area, within the area. So this is the second course, Ontario Pickerel Taco with Ontario Stone Fruit Salsa. And it's paired with juicin from Soda City Brewery. So this is the grass-fed lamb slider from Jim Johnson with lo local cascaf berries from Virgil de Terroir. Paired with violets are blue from Merit Brewing. And now we're seeing some sunset over the fire. This is the bison tenderloin with backyard raspberries with local shiitake mushroom risotto. Paired with nowhere from Merit Brewing. So these are campfire s'mores with roasted marshmallows, the melted chocolate, and graham crackers. Hey guys, so we're checking in at the waterfront inn in Ulysses so we have a waterfront view 
and this one and this one. So this is our room. We have a nice washroom, a shower. So we have a nice two bedroom unit and we actually have a nice view of the water but it's already night time so I'll show it tomorrow morning. It's got beautiful views of Lake Temiskui. Hey guys, so I'm so excited because I've been eating a lot of the bison dishes in Temiskaming Shores and most and almost all of them come from Bison du Nord. So we're now touring the bison farm and we'll be checking out their bison. He's a friendly one. Okay. <laughs> I think. We don't know, he's new. Hello. Hi Raymond. Nice to meet you Patrick. Patrick? Nice You're you. both uh, Torontonians? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Good. Well, Hello. and I know Hello. you're you guys are working Charles. on a tight schedule. You got to eat all day. Yes. <laughs> we have a five course meal this morning to start. No. <laughs> no you uh, this is Shal, my son. Hello. Bison tour because it's both a working bison ranch. We've been at this for 48 years ranching bison. So we're one of the oldest bison ranches in Canada. It's, in, mm -hmm. it's a new practice. Of course, people have been raising cattle and hogs and chicken and for 10,000 years I gather humans but for bison it's a very recent experiment that they actually are farmed commercially up until the late 60s they were considered game fauna just like moose so you could not own them privately you could not do commerce and, uh, with bison and then they were in a sense deregulated or given a twin status both wildlife in the national parks and in state parks in the U.S., but also allowed to be ranched commercially in private, in private hands. So uh, that's what we, we got in in those early days and have been working at it since then. And now we have a large uh, bison ranch, probably the largest one in eastern Canada, 300 bison. So, And it's a meat, and meat production enterprise. We produce animals for meat. We also have added a tourism side to it. We're strong local promoters mm -hmm. in the area. And, you know, and so... I see your products everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. It's, it is a and long... It, and it's nice to see experience like from the producer all the way to the restaurant. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we try hard. It's, 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 it's like missionary work though. <laughs> but it's hard. It's a world that demands consistency, standardization, and price competition. All those elements are always there. That, limit that so to, for this to survive as a commercial enterprise and it's a multi-generational my father was with me in the early 70s on this then i kept it on now my son is uh, and daughters are wow. taking ownership so, so of the farm yeah mm -hmm. we're hoping and uh, in a few days we're going to have the fourth generation oh. so we're awesome. really bucking the trend there we're going for stability long-term ownership of the land and long-term stewardship of the land. But I'll show you, when we take people out in a wagon, they're very, they appear menacing. It's a very large, big animal, but they're not aggressive at all. They're placid. It's, it's an ancient bovine. And so we can go right into the herd with this wagon behind the tractor. So let's go take a look. Let's jump in there. Sure. This is, um, merci, Charles. Okay hey guys, so we're now riding a wagon and we're going to be touring the bison farm. These are what's called haylage. It's so it's the silage is, is a hail a hay that's baled wet and then wrapped and it's collected and shipped to recycling plants in southern Ontario to break it up into chips. People get to see him close in and we explain, depending on what group we have on the mm -hmm. wagon, 30, 35 people, yeah. we'll, explain, we'll adjust it. Yeah. Uh, we'll do it in French and we'll do it in English. We'll do, mm. if they're experienced farmers, we'll talk about the grass species in the yeah. field. Mm. Uh, if, not, if, if they're young children, of course, we'll concentrate on the calves and the mothers and uh, the milking and so on, how mm. they, they feed 
20 times a day, these calves. So it will make it interesting. And it's about an hour and a half tour. We'll go see the herd. You'll see how close we can get to yeah, them. Yeah, And uh, it's a very interesting animal. There's all kinds of history related to it, of course. First Nations, indigenous relations to the bison. is all kinds of stories on that. With the multiple uses they made of the bison and its bones and its hide mm. and its meat. And so there's all kinds of stories there. We we usually bring an experiential kit with us into the field, which is some bison bones, bison ribs, and of course some of the fur, because they shed winter coat every year, and it can be knit, it can be woven. So we show that, we have people touch and feel that in the skull and so on. So there's, that part of that is fun. And the wagon ride itself is a lot of fun, because it's, it's a wagon, it's yeah. open air, it's got a, a canvas roof, but it's, it's open air and it shakes and moves and we, it's comfortable, but it's not over comfortable. It's got <laughs> plush seats, and so it's a nice feeling. The kids love it. Mm -hmm. Some of the mature kids, <laughs> you guys. Look at all these bisons. Hey guys, so now we're up close with the bisons and it's amazing to see there's 300 bisons here and over 640 acres of land. And they're all pretty much hiding in the forest as well, so it's cool to see. Then we come back and we show them the handling facilities, which is really a nice, big part of a bison operation. Mm -hmm. Handling the bison is, is uh, the tough part, so we need to tag them because we want to have oh, okay. we want to have traceability in the herd, mm -hmm. which cows are having calves are fertile and which aren't. And of course, uh, in animal husbandry in the modern world requires traceability. But we work at it really hard. The regenerative aspect, we're going to be certified regenerative. We're certified uh, animal welfare, we're certified grass-fed. These are third-party certifications. And so when we say grass-fed, it is not not a gr kernel of corn and no <laughs> grains, no oats, mm -hmm. and uh, all grass, which is a real challenge. So we have these pastures that are, and we do what's called rotational grazing. We move the animals from field to field. Now moving bison is not as easy as <laughs> Well, you got the helper, the dog. Yeah, the dog. Well, the dog actually is afraid of the bison. Oh. <laughs> they, they used to perceive him as something like probably either black bear or wolf, oh. so they attack him. A gift shop, and here we'll have a variety of bison souvenirs. Oh, look nice. at the skulls. Yeah. Hey guys, so our next stop is in Cornlow Cheese and I love Cornlow Cheese. I've had them before, mostly at restaurants or I've bought them at grocery stores. So it's nice to see the actual facility. We've been here since 1940. We hiked Devil's Rock yesterday and they also have a cheese that's Based on Devil's Rock, it's a blue cheese, and you can see the design as like a big rock. This is made locally. Now I'm trying the four year aged cheddar with a butter tart. And it's a good mix. You can have the sweetness of the butter tart with the creaminess of the cheddar as well as the sharp saltiness. It's a good balance and mix. Pretty addicting actually. So here we go, caramelized onion, curds. And we put all these wild animals on our packaging. 
um, to remind people that we're from Northern Ontario and our terroir is very unique. And we're part of a wilderness region, but also a lot of dairy farming here. Kurt! Yes. That is gonna be flavorful. Gonna be trying the caramelized onion cheese curds. <laughs> this one over here. <laughs> it's really unique. We have some happy customers from Corn Road. <laughs> We found this really big field of canola and it's so beautiful. Hey everyone, so we're now here in the Quebec side and we're here at Farm Nord V and they actually are a family run farm and they specialize in strawberries, raspberries, rhubarb and they also grow some different sorts of vegetables. Welcome Thank you. at Farm Nord V. Um, okay, well, I'm going to uh, show you a little bit around do a small visit sure. of the place, maybe 15 minutes, and we're going to taste uh, a few things. We do uh, always a different visit in every day because uh, we visit where we work today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or if you come next week, we might be in somewhere <laughs> else. So you see the real life in real time. So we can just oh. pick. Fresh raspberries. Mm. Very tasty and sweet. Okay. Careful on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this is our <laughs> small kitchen for uh, the hydration. We do transform every vegetable that are not sell at the fresh market fair. So this is really simple. We have uh, uh, this is actually, this is a salad that we didn't sell and uh, we do not want to lose it. So, so we wash it, we dehydrate, de dehydrate and mm. after that we, uh, we do mix. And right now Ariane <laughs> is transforming the garlic cake in uh, garlic cake finishing salt. Uh, we do a lot of finishing salt. Mix. This is uh, a uh, garlic scape finishing salt. So this on a fresh corn with butter. This is really, really good. Purple radishes finishing salt. Uh, the, the juice, because we do sparkling juice with strawberry, with rhubarb, and sometimes with ra uh, raspberries. And it's also where we make the alcohol. We have aperitif and aquamil. And when the strawberry come from the field, the, we freeze it in air, but before that, we never pick, pick up the yeah. We never do that by hand because it's really, really, really long. We do that with uh, this machine. We put the washed strawberry right there, and it goes through. We have the um, the juice is, is coming through that, and this is what we transform. And just for fun, because this is one of my favorite thing to do when I come here. We're going to taste the, the strawberry juice, but from the tank. Oh yes, purple. <laughs> In the tank there is always more pressure, and uh, it smells most, uh, uh, more, and uh, that's just fun. Some fresh no, no, strawberry no, juice from the farm. Uh, this three tank are used for producing the juice. So good, but oh my gosh. gosh. The two are empty for now, we're just finishing to the bottle of the rhubarb. it's uh, in fact a strawberry wine, fortify and aged in an oak barrel. Uh, it's not sweet, it's dry, and it's uh, 14 years old right now. It's maderisé, you will see, it's, it tastes like um, dry fruit, and it's a little bit smoke and with the oak taste we like to serve it with the campfire with the with the smoke that you can smell while you're drinking mm -hmm. but i do not have campfire it's <laughs> one addition i have to make one day so we're and trying imagine, this imagine strawberry with, um, fruit wine a jerky 
and they do it differently from grape wines. It's actually fermented strawberries and they add alcohol in it. Hey guys, so we're here at Le Fromage au Village in Quebec and they specialize in artisan cheeses made from milk around the region and they are actually very famous for their fresh cheese curds and in the shop they're actually mostly available on Mondays for the fresh cheese curds but we still hope we can try some of the cheese curds and maybe get a tour of the facility. Hey guys, so we're all dressed up and we're gonna tour the cheese production facility and let's check it out. Um, today it's our biggest day of the week, okay? Oh, okay. So, so we have a lot of order because our fresh curds, the summer is the biggest time of the year to sell the, the small bag. Mm -hmm. So each uh, box go to a different grocery store. Order here, so everything is a store. So we have two of our delivery boys, so they are leaving <laughs> with some boxes to go. So here is uh, the room that we deliver the milk. Delivery guy come uh, park the truck outside of the cheese factory. Put it in the, the silo, yeah, it's outside. Right there. Okay. Okay. So this machine is the uh, pasteurizer. So it's a HTST. So that pasteurizes the meal continuously. So we start the button and the meal arrives, and we choose in which tub we put it, okay. and it's almost instantly. We do our uh, we do orange curds, so this is where we do the orange part. Okay. So this is a 1,000 tub. Okay. Okay. It's our lowest day, so we do the cleaning. So this oh, is why okay. it's like that. Each week, this is the the mold, the mold that we use to do the cheddar cheese. So each week, we oh. are uh, uh, putting in this tub to uh, wash it with certain product to make sure that they are all clean. So each week, so we do that Friday because it's the lowest day. So they will be in the water and the, the, the stuff all night. So this is uh, our 5,000 liter tub. Here it's the, we put the, some of the cheese needs to go to uh, the tub with water and salt, with salt. So this is the tub that we use to uh, put the salt in it. So this is the, our speciali specialty cheese. Mm. So this one is la coulée des Zéras. So you can see the difference. So this one, it was made on the 8th of June, so you can see that the, the orange appear, and this one 29, so they are still white. Mm. So they will be pretty much orange before we sell it. Mm. This is the Diablo Bash, so they are made the 1st of June, mm -hmm. so you see they are bright orange, and this one was 1-3 one July, so you see they are brand new. Mm -hmm. So they are still no rhyme at all. Kind of thing, all kind of seasoning of our cheese curd. Mm -hmm. So this one is vegetable, and this is orange curd. And I'm pretty sure we have, oh, we have a lot of orange. And this is barbecue one. Barbecue. This room is used to cut. We'll see the big mold on the other room, but we use this room to cut the big uh, moo in small pieces. Okay. This is our, the, our cheese that's called Angelus. It's a steel camembert. So you see they are brand new. They were made Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 19 Monday. 
So they have no rhyme on it. In a few days, takes about one week, and they will be white like that. You can see the black, it's the ashes, oh. and the white uh, grow on top of the ashes. Mm. And this is the paradise. Oh. <laughs> oh. So this is all of our cheddar, so at wow. here we do six month old cheddar and two years old cheddar. So you can see, you have the date on the, on the, the mold, so you can see and this is the older one so we store it like that and we keep it for two years, two years. so depending at two years we, uh, we sell it um, so this one is a cheddar with wet wine on it here is the we call it the grave the, the baby after a big day so they putting the small pieces in the box Okay. Which you will have in your poutine. But this is really fresh from today. You think why fresh beef curd. It was only made today. And it's their most popular item that every day in the summer they only make cheese curd. And when you leave it on the counter, this is what that makes the squishy. Mm. When you so put it squeaky. In the fridge, oh my yeah. god. So good. A semi firm cheese with mm -hmm. ashes on it. Le Cendrie de Notre Dame. And then this one is? This one is the Cudu Cloche, the Rami Cheddar, six months old. Oh, so we're now trying some poutine using their famous cheese curds. Look at that. Oh wow. Let's try this poutine. Angela, <laughs> welcome. So this is our historic site that is really where the beginning of the local economic development of the area started. Um, there's different methods. Either the fur traders and smaller canoes would come directly to the people and they would trade, or like here we were a post. So the beaver fur has two uh, types of fur. This is their waterproofing outer layer. This wasn't what we were looking for. We were looking for the winter fur, like a dog or a cat in the winter gets a winter fur. The beaver as well will get a winter fur. It's very soft. It's called the duvet. And we would take that, and we would make a felt for the gentleman's top hat. So the top hat was a symbol of your position in society. If you had a top hat, you were you had money, and you were important. The higher it was, the bigger it was, the more important and the richer you were. And the the felt was made out of the beaver fur. Also, you could see other military hats would also have been made out of the beaver felt. Time. So one on their back and another one over top. To go. <laughs> the Fort Temiskamine is part of the Ottawa River system. It's an enlargement of the river that becomes a lake. And so if you wanted to go, you could float all the way down to Montreal and the St. Lawrence from mm. here. Our walk will be about a kilometer and a half. So the merchandise would come in the big Canoe du Met, which or otherwise known as the Montreal Canoe. It would be eight to ten men paddling mm. for 25 days from Montreal oh, wow. to here, oh. stopping just to sleep or if the weather was too bad. But we do have a local Anishinaabe man who makes canoes 
and he's repairing our canoes. Oh, wow. uh, the, for example, the uh, Algonquins, they had um, just a kind of piece of wood, a kind of bow, okay, mm -hmm. to do the fire, but uh, yeah, the Voyager had flint from Europe and iron from Europe. It was far easier. No. As you can see, I do yeah, have some flint. The spark, yeah. Some spark, yeah. We take a piece of this little thing, is a, how do you say in English, carbonized? Uh, carbonized cotton. To make charcoal, you would burn wood in a pile and you cover it so it has only a tiny bit of oxygen. So it half burns, it's already burnt, but there's the coal is left. Kind of like at the end of a fire, you have a little bit, but you would mm -hmm. have a lot more. Okay. So we took a piece of cotton, we put it in a tin can that was completely covered with just a little hole, and we burnt it on the fire. So we could see smoke coming mm -hmm. out. When it's finished carbonizing, the smoke will stop. We let it cool down, and this is what we have. So it's a charcoal, a cotton charcoal. Mm. So you do a kind of uh, beard, uh, how do you say that in English? I mean, or in... Oh, like a little nest? Yeah, like a little nest of that stuff. Um. You take your stone with your uh, carbonized coat. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, well. Wait, Did it go? You have to get the, the spark to fall on the cotton. So sometimes oh, okay. it, you have lots of sparks, but they're not going where you want them to go. If it's very humid, mm -hmm. also the cotton may not work. We've been touching this one a lot, so <laughs> who knows? Yes. That depends. Sometimes it's not really long, but sometimes it can be what, like one or two minutes. But if you're good, it's 10 seconds, but I'm not really good. <laughs> some good sparks it might oh. oh good so you can't really see but it's it's starting to burn yes yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It could be used as a needle for sewing. Wait, this one? Nope. Oh, one right here. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, very sharp. Martin, beaver, muskrat, and a value would be given to them. And they could get credits or they could trade right away for items in the store. The fabric and the blankets were the most traded item. They did try to grow corn here. They found it grew the best at the north end of the lake but they did grow some corn. It's believed that there was a young girl who lived at the fort and her father was the chief trader and he brought, or he ordered a flute for her to try to keep her busy. So one day he presented her the flute and she picked it up and she tried to play it. She wasn't very good. So they said, oh, go play somewhere else. And so she went. I hope you enjoyed this road trip of Lake Temiskaming tour. It's such a great way to explore Ontario and Quebec. Which stops do you want to do? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this kind of video, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so you don't miss new videos.